Here more uh, more one factor models. Holy model. Holy model looks simple. Well, I think they first introduced it in a discrete uh, time version, but this would be the continuous time version of the same model. Uh, you again have normal distribution because this is normally distribu distributed sigma dw. And then you have b of t dt, where b of t is deterministic. Okay, so the whole thing is normally distributed because this b is not random. But it's a function of time. Yeah, it's a function of time. Now, why, why did Ho and Lee suggest something like this? Uh, instead, of, uh, instead of having fixed parameters, this, there is a parameter which varies with time. Well, it's um, again related to, to the calibration with our usual formula that P of dt is equal to the expectation uh, of you know, the discount factor. When you do the calibration and you ha if you have bonds of many maturities, capital T, and you're trying to fit today's prices for bonds of many maturities, in the previous two uh, uh, models in Vasicek and Cox and Ross, you only had uh, like three parameters, right? A, B, and sigma. Three constant parameters. So, so you only have three numbers you can choose to fit possibly many bond prices, uh, prices of bonds with many maturities. So it doesn't give you uh, a lot of freedom to fit the data well. Now in the whole Lee model, you suddenly have infinitely many parameters. For every t, you have a different number here. So b of t uh, is really a function of t, which means like continuously many parameters that you can... Uh, and if you, if you imagine that you have infinitely many bonds, infinitely many maturities, which people effectively do pretend that it's the case, because when you look at the yield curve, the yield curve is usually like a smooth curve. Um, right, it's a uh, yield curve is like a smooth curve, but but really in in reality it's observed only at discrete uh, points, uh, maturities that are available. But people then smooth it out, pretending that you have infinitely many bonds, and then you get a smooth curve if you have infinitely many maturities. So with infinite, if you are trying to calibrate your model to the yield curve, you are really trying to to uh, calibrate it to this infinitely many points, this whole curve, and to do that perfectly you would need infinitely many parameters, and in the whole Lean model you do have infinitely many parameters uh, by introducing this B of T function. All right, so that, that was the idea behind the whole Lean model. And then Hall and White said, well, uh, yeah, that's a good idea, but it might be better to have mean reversion in the drift, so they subtract AR for example, uh, dt here, still have infinitely many parameters, but you also have mean, mean reversion if you choose b of t appropriately. That's called the uh, Hull-White model. And then there is a black uh, derman toy model, which is the one with uh, r both in the drift and r in uh, multiplying sigma. r is multiplying everything. So it's like a black Scholes model, really, uh, except for the interest rate and not for the stock price. And you make maybe a, a, a deterministic function of, of time to have infinitely many parameters. Now, they introduced it in, in discrete time, too. And now black is the same black, F Fisher Black from black Scholes. Derman, Emmanuel Derman was uh, also a quant and a head quant for a number of years in Goldman Sachs. Black was also in Goldman Sachs. Um, uh, now uh, Derman is, uh, is uh, an affiliated faculty at Columbia Financial Engineering Program. Now there is, um, actually in continuous time, th this model doesn't work. Uh, the reason why it doesn't work is you can show that this model expected value of e to the integral 0 to t r of u du is infinity for every t. Uh, what does this mean? This means that that what is this uh, this thing here? This thing here is 
how much one dollar will, ret will return to you if you put it in the bank account with interest rate R after time T. Okay? So this would say that on average, one dollar in the bank account at uh, this interest rate would give you an infinite amount of money in any amount of time. So fantastic, that would be great, but obviously not realistic. Uh, and um, the reason, mathematical reason behind this is because R has log normal distribution here, right, like Black-Scholes, uh, which means it's an exponential of a Brownian motion, exponential of a normal distribution. So now, now you will have exponential of the exponential of normal distribution, right? So exponential of an exponential of a normal. That that's has a really fast, uh, high growth. Exponen exponential function is already fast growing. Now, if you have exponential of exponential, that's very fast growing and goes to infinity. OK, in discrete time, you don't really have that problem. If it's a finite discrete uh, model, uh, nothing goes to infinity in a finite, uh, in a finite model. Uh, but in continuous time, this, this model does not work. OK. Now, now going to, to the idea that, uh, well, not the idea, but the, the um, desire to be able to compute this conditional expectation, uh, well, uh, one way to try to do it uh, is by solving the partial differential equation. And uh, we can kind of guess what the partial differential equation for, for uh, options written on the uh, interest rate would look like, and this is what I'm doing here in the last line. So I'm here assuming that it's an option or derivative, which at maturity is a function of what the interest rate R is at that time. Now, really, what I'm going to do in the next slide, I'm just going to use this when GR is equal to 1, meaning I'm pricing a bond which pays $1 at maturity, zero coupon bond which pays $1. Um, there are, I mean, you don't really have options which depend on final value of the interest rate. The interest rate is not really observable anyway. Um, so, so really, I, I will only need uh, the, this equation when, when, uh, when the terminal condition is just paying $1 at maturity. How would uh, the differential equation look like? Well, a, you know, C would be a function of T and R now. Uh, the, the price of, of the claim, it will be the bond later on, but in general, the price of any claim will depend on T and R, one factor model, time and R. Well, time is the second factor, but not a random factor. Well, we will have, you know, think of Ito's rule. You will have derivative with respect to time plus one half sigma squared. What uh, I'm, I'm talking about general model in, in which uh, dr is some mu tr dt plus sigma tr dw of t. Okay, so that's what I'm looking at here. So derivative with respect to time, ct, one half this sigma squared, which sigma may depend on tnr. Second derivative with respect to r, crr plus drift mu of tr times first derivative cr, and then discounting minus rc equal to zero. Okay. That would be, that would be the um, differential equation. But by the way, and this is when I teach this at Caltech, I always mention here that this is something. So here I'm kind of guessing that it has to be this differential equation from my experience with Ito's rule. Uh, but there is a theorem. And the reason why I always mention it when I teach at Caltech is because it's a uh, Feynman Katz theorem. And of course, uh, Feynman uh, was, was one of the most famous physicists of the 20th century, and he was at Caltech most of his career. So there is, I'm going to do it uh, up here just uh, so that I don't have to move the slides. So there is a Feynman Katz theorem, which I will not. Uh, I will not state here, I'll just tell you what it is about, and you can find it in, in books if you want to. So Feynman-Katz theorem 
says if you have uh, a function, let's use our notation, let's say c of t, uh, for example in this case c of t r is some expectation starting at t and uh, value r for the interest rate uh, of, uh, it could be different things, it could be e to the minus integral t to t, uh, it could be some function f of r and f of t and r u du. It might be multiplied by some other function g of capital T and r of t. Right? So if you have something like this, some expectation of maybe discount factor, some function of r of your process and time, uh, thi then then the final cost theorem gives you the uh, PDE partial differential equation for this function CTR. Okay, I'm not going to write the PD, but uh, this is a special case down here, the one that we have for pricing. So, so uh, I'm going to write this a little bit nicer for C of T and R. Uh, Okay, that's the final cost theorem. It tells you, uh, well, I don't give it here in detail, but it tells you if you have expected values of some functions of a, of a process driven by brain emotion, uh, then the final cost theorem tells you what the partial differential equation for that expected value looks like. Right? Now, uh, Feynman was a physicist, Katz was a mathematical physicist. They didn't do this for finance purposes. They did it for physics and statistical mechanics purposes. Uh, but, but it's useful uh, if you have uh, expected values or, or to compute uh, of si in some Brownian motion models. Uh, it tells you exactly how to write down the differential equation, the partial differential equation. So, so why didn't we use this, or why didn't Black and Scholes use this to get their partial differential equation? If you remember, we never used feynman katz theorem. We derived the equation from uh, replication argument? Well, that's because Black and Scholes at that time and Merton uh, did not actually know about the expectation formula, right? They didn't know about risk-neutral pricing. They didn't know that you can write prices as expected values, like here. Uh, they, they, uh, if they had known that, they might have used final cut theorem. It did exist at that time and just get the partial differential equation right away. But they didn't know that. Risk-neutral pricing came after Black Scholes. Uh, so that, that's the reason uh, why they, they didn't use the final cut theorem, but derived the differential equation directly from no arbitrage arguments. Fine. Um, the bottom line is in models, one-factor models, which are driven by the interest rate, as this last equation in red down here, uh, the, we know what the partial differential equation is. It looks like this. So I'm going to use that in the next uh, slide.